It's regrettable. So, that, you know, I, I, I did have you, you were wondering with all this, you know, reluctance to be happy, how did you end up uh, becoming happy? And it's because I had a turning point. I had a, a significant moment in my life. Something happened which uh, changed the course of my life, right? And it happened after the wedding of the friend who stagged who I'd been on, right? We went back to America. Uh, America is a country, of course, which prides itself on individuals being able to do whatever they want to do, which is not something I am comfortable with, if I'm honest. You can do whatever you like in America, and what I like to do instead is think of things I'd like to do, imagine them ending with me getting hurt and stay inside and sitting down. Right. So we go out for my friend's wedding, and after the wedding, what happens is we go to a cabin in the wilderness, right? And we decide we're gonna we're gonna drink and play cards and get to know each other again, right? And uh, when we get to the cabin, there's a slight problem initially, which is there's something in the cabin which I hadn't encountered before, which is insects. Right, now, I say that because you think, well, we've got insects. We haven't got insects. We've got midges and flies. We've got flying toys, is what we've got. <laughs> in America, they've got things called hornets and a thing called a cockroach. Now, if you've never seen a cockroach before, they're about the size of a Labrador. <laughs> if you imagine that Labrador is driving something like a Fiat Seicento, that'll give you an idea of the build of the thing right now. With most insects, I'll be honest, what I do is I uh, scream and I run away from them. That's, that's my first policy. But obviously, you can't do that if they're in your house. You have to deal with them a different way. And policy number two is to stand on them. Uh, I'm not proud of that, but let's be honest, there's billions of them, so I'll just... Eh! Right, now, the problem with a cockroach, you stand on a cockroach and absolutely nothing changes. They just carry on about their business, <laughs> dragging you along with them. If you could get on two, you could ride them into town like that. <laughs> Built like tanks they are, right? So I have to elevate to option number three, right? And option number three is to drink until I can't feel them crawling all over my flesh anymore. Because <laughs> obviously, as we all know, that cockroaches crawl in your mouth while you're asleep, they lay eggs in your stomach and you die. So what I do is I drink an awful lot of whiskey, right? And by the end of the evening, as the smallest one in the group, I'm now what you would call royally shit-faced. <laughs> I go up to bed, pop a little plastic bag over my head so they can't get me while I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. <laughs> anyway, I, drink, I drink a lot of whiskey, right? I go to bed, come down in the morning, I'm feeling very sick, right? And uh, my only hope is that all my friends feel as sick as I do, and that's the end of today, isn't it? They say, what do you want to do today? I say, I really want to sit still and not say anything and then sporadically look out of a window, think of some toast and be sick. <laughs> I get down there, they're all fine, because they're bigger than me and they're not scared of anything like insects, so they're planning the day out. And my mate goes, hey, John, there's a lake down the road. We're going to go and see if we can hire a speedboat. <laughs> I just can't tell you the many ways in which that's not what I wanted to do with my day, right? When he said that, I heard it in the voice of Michael Burke, because uh, I grew up watching a programme called 999 with Michael Burke. <laughs> We all started with things like that. If you haven't seen the programme, what it was is people nearly died, and instead of chalking that up to experience, we used to reconstruct it with actors for fun. <laughs> and we'd have Michael Burke's sobering commentary so you could really enjoy it, right? Because, let's be honest, they might as well have called that programme Sometimes Dickheads Get What's Coming To It. <laughs> Uniquely moronic people on that programme. You have Michael Burke saying, Steve was a diabetic who hadn't eaten for three months when he decided to swim the English Channel. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Everyone gather round. <laughs> Bring those crisps I bought back from the holiday. And then they spiral out, so someone calls the Coast Guard because he's drowning, but the Coast Guard's pawned his arms to buy drugs and nobody knew, so... <laughs> he sets off in the boat but can't steer, so he runs straight over Steve, knocking him out, and <laughs> tangling his ponytail in the propeller, and they drag each other to the coast of France. Where they're shouting, please help, we don't know what to do, which is the French for fucking bring it if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> whole war with a village, right? So when he said that, I heard Michael Burke saying, the four alcoholics decided to hire a vehicle they'd never driven before in a country they didn't know. Uh, we're going to die today. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> we're going to die on a boat today, or off a boat. That's the great thing about boats, you can die on or off them. <laughs> I'm really gonna have to stop this happening, right? And uh, it was too early then, so they bundled me into the back of the van. I'm secretly content that you can't just get speedboats, can you? Because they're too big, do you know what I mean? Like in this country, if you went to the Lake District, say, excuse me, can I have a speedboat? They'd say, ah, have you got a speedboat and your speedboat license? In America, it's slightly different, you see. In America, you drive down to a lake and you'll find a shack by that lake and you walk into the shack and behind the desk will be a toothless local. Uh, you approach the local and you say, excuse me, we're not from around here, can we have a speedboat? And he will reply, sure as shit you can have a speedboat! <laughs> this here's America, son, go out on a speedboat! <laughs> 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 
That was a hauntingly accurate recollection <laughs> of exactly what happened. Five minutes before, I was vomiting at the thought of toast. Now, I'm about to be given the keys to a fucking speedboat. <laughs> All he said was, he said, you can have a speedboat so long as one of y'all got a driving license. And my friend went, yeah, I've got a driving license. I said, yeah, he's got a driving license for a different vehicle in a different land. <laughs> I'm still not sure what relevance a UK driving license is to a speedboat in America. <laughs> if I'm honest, you can't go to Australia and say, excuse me, can I have that hot air balloon? Of course you can, mate. Can I just ask, have you ever been on Dodgems? <laughs> Moronic country, right? So he's drawing it through and I think, I've got my first chance here to save everybody's life. They'll not thank me for it at their time, but I'm not gonna die today, right? So I said, uh, oh, I don't suppose you've brought your paper counterpart though, have you? <laughs> I won't be able to go, mate. That's just only half a license he's giving you there. You should have, you're not even listening. Right? This is the license as far as I'm concerned. Pink motherfucker, ain't never seen one of those before. <laughs> Let's go get the keys to the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Off he goes to get the keys. We conger off behind him, right? As we're going across the shop, my friend notices a fridge which is full of beers. And he says, excuse me, are we allowed to buy these beers? And he said, sure as shit you can buy those beers. <laughs> this here's America, son. Get shit face. Go out on a speed boat. <laughs> His roof's in tatters. <laughs> We're now walking down to the lakeside with a crate of lagers under each arm and the keys to a speedboat, right? And I think, well, we're definitely gonna die today. That's, that's a given now. At least the alcohol will numb the pain of death. Right? We get down to the, to the side of the lake for what I'm hoping will be a 30 minute to one hour tutorial on how to drive a speedboat. <laughs> Various do's and don'ts of modern speedboatery. He chucks the keys in the boat, he goes, have a good day, don't hit any other boats. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really the sort of sentence that if you have to say to someone, you shouldn't really be giving them the keys to a speedboat, I think. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they know not to drive directly into another speedboat. <laughs> so now I'm convinced this is gonna be the last day of my life, right? And we get in the speedboat, and sure enough, after four to five hours, I'd had one of the best days of my entire life. <laughs> It's an awkward moment, that, isn't it? And all I would say is, if you feel let down by the end of that story, imagine how pissed off I was. <laughs> I went out there in good faith to die in a horrific accident that day, and I had to climb off my little high horse and admit I'd had a lovely day and thank them for inviting me.